Hello, in this video I would like to show you the last changes to the design and the production of the individual parts for the hull, as well as a bending test for the bow. Hi, I'm Jake. In this video I want to show you the final design adjustments and the beginning of the construction of the hull. Compared to the last design status, I have removed the side benches and made the top side of the transom of straight lines. This is because it needs to be reinforced with strips and plates and it's much easier to build it like that. The side benches are also difficult to build and take too much space in the cockpit. The making of the individual parts is more or less the same as for the rudder and centerboard. All plywood parts and beams on the inside are made of pine wood. The outer beams are made of ash wood. Again, the flat parts were drawn on the wood with my CNC plotter and then cut out using a jigsaw. And of course, some sanding was also required. The hull is coated on both sides with fiberglass to give it sufficient strength. All external plywood parts are coated with fiberglass and epoxy. Internal parts are coated with epoxy only before everything is painted. All flat parts are coated with fiberglass mats and prepared as far as possible before they are installed. A fiberglass fabric with a plain weave and a weight of 220 grams per square meter is used for this purpose. If possible, a peel ply was used. The edges where fillets are to be installed later are taped so that no epoxy can get there during coating at this stage. The parts that are duplicated were only plotted once and then copied by sticking them on roughly cut wood of the same thickness with double sided tape and routing it flush to the exact size afterwards. Where this was not possible they were cut with a jigsaw and hand tools. The holes for the reinforcements, zip ties and wires were also drilled during this step. Like this you can make sure that they are mirrored exactly to the opposite side. A small jig was made for these holes with which positions at a distance of 5, 10 and 15 cm and 11 mm from the edge were marked. Additionally, the overlapping edges were rounded off slightly to prevent them from slipping under tension caused by the stitching process. All four joints of the plates were cut along the markings using my scarf joint jig. The bow plates are reinforced at the end of the cut and at the height of bulkhead 1, as shown here, with a round fiberglass patch. Also, a screw with some washers was inserted to reinforce the holes at the ends of the cuts during the bending process. With all parts cut out, it was time for a bending test of the bow. This part is the most curved, resulting in greater forces and stresses. First, the panels were stitched up to the incision. They were then laid flat on top of each other and stitched together relatively loosely. Then a holder made from two negatives of bulkhead 2 and 4 was screwed onto a table and everything was placed on top. Everything was then temporarily connected with bulkhead 5 using a tap and lock connection before the longitudinal reinforcement and the other bulkheads were installed. Finally, the hull was pulled together at bulkhead 1 and 2 using a tensioning strap. Even though the forces that were required to bend the wood were higher than expected, it could be shown that it's possible to bend the wood like planned. Unfortunately, everything needs to be disassembled again to get the parts out of the basement. Once all parts are prepared and it's getting warmer outside, I plan to make the final assembly outside of the house. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Bye!